Hi again everyone, Dave Johnston here with another project that we're tackling today. This one's a little bit different in that uh, it's a home improvement project, not fixing anything but adding to an existing laundry area that just is not adequate to do the job makes it really difficult for my wife to do the things that she needs to do with respect to laundry. So I am doing this as part of her Christmas present this year. So shh, don't tell her. It's a secret. <laughs> so we'll get started here. I'm going to show you a before. I haven't done anything here. This is just trying to make this work in the space that's here. And then uh, we'll go ahead and go through the, the task. I'm going to add a hanger bar uh, to hang the clothes on and then I'm going to add a shelf on top of that and make it so that it can all be organized, things can be put away. And this space isn't so bad, it's, it's the upstairs laundry, so it's not a big room. It's the type that's kind of an expanded closet, has the washer and dryer in it, and uh, it's very convenient, very nice. It's just that it doesn't have all of the things that it could have to make life easier. So I'll show you what it looks like. This is the before. The, you can see both the doors are open. They're open because there's nowhere to hang anything. So as you're, you're doing the different laundry, needing to hang things up to dry or whatnot, right now the only place you can hang them is on the molding that goes across the top of the doors on the inside of the, the closet area. So kind of making the best of a limited situation. So you can see the washer and dryer there. Now you can see a lot easier what we have to work with. Hopefully you can see that. <clears throat> uh, what I was going to show is the whole idea of this project is to get the clothes to hang at the right level so that you have space underneath here on top of the washer and dryer that makes it useful. And then you'll have, up at the top, you'll also have space on the shelf and that it doesn't make it so far away that a person can't reach them. And I think with my bracket, hopefully you can see that <clears throat> about like so. So I'm going to mark, just put a quick mark right there. Get in there where I need to go. Put it all the way up torque-wise. Okay, it's a little bit far away, but hopefully you can see me okay. What I'm going to do is mount this first bracket. <clears throat> I had it there. If you can see that. It makes it a little bit easier with this bracket. It's a little more convenient to put the screw in. So I'll mark that hole. And these, these brackets have these holes on the top where the head of the screw can go right through. So I put the screw in, put the bracket up, and then finish it off. And that makes it a little bit easier to get in here without the bracket in my way. Now, we're going to go through and attach all of these into the studs. So they have lots and lots of strength. We don't do anything as far as sheetrock anchors. They're just weak and they make big holes in the wall. And I do everything I possibly can to avoid them when I can. And in this case we're going to do that uh, with that screw in place we can put this one up right where it goes. That worked out really well. You're probably whoops I turned that on. You're probably noticing that my screws are black. The brackets and whoops when we have the shelves, <clears throat> everything's going to be white. So I will have to come back 
and touch up the heads of the screws. Like I was showing before, I could have bought the, the screws with the white caps, but they're more expensive, they aren't as strong as these screws, they aren't as easy to use. So, touching these up, when we're all done won't be a big deal. So that guy is in place, if you can see that. What I was going to mention about studs, rather than using, you would never use sheetrock anchors for this kind of a project. They, they will would definitely pull out of the wall, not something that you want to use for something like this that's got to hold up some weight. But what I was going to say about the studs is, you can always rely on a stud in the corner. So this corner and my other corner, the studs are very easy to find. And you always want to make sure that you hit a stud when you put your screws in. Otherwise it will just fall right out of the wall. So we have that one in place. It then becomes my standard as far as the height for all the rest of them. <clears throat> and let me do one more quick check here now that we've got that in place. I think that looks good. And that's, this is a relatively long shirt so their other shirts will be up higher so I think we're in good shape <clears throat> what we will do here is I don't I don't have one of the electronic set finders that may be a, a future review um, because I've always had good luck finding the studs with my knuckle stud finder which I'll show you in just a second you typically can count on them being 16 inches apart. The hard part of that is knowing where to start your 16 inch measurement from. The other hard part of that is sometimes your walls and closet spaces and whatnot don't come out exactly to be 16 inches so you may have one that's a short space in there somewhere and it sometimes can be a challenge figuring out where exactly to hit. We do have one starting point here where we know from this corner we've hit a stud there. Hopefully the next one's the 16th inch center coming this direction from that one. If that's the case then it'll be very easy to to find them and space them. A quick close up here of what I've done. So that guy, he's it's pulled out a little bit from the wall because of the the bracket itself and when we put that up with the rod in place there's a small screw you can't see it but right here at the bottom of the bracket is a screw where we can screw into the rod to hold the rod into place and then it'll help space all of those as well so we'll do that here in a little bit I'd like to make it so that it's a little easier for you to see I put these other brackets up that hopefully it's a little bit better the next one will be right about here okay I know this one ends up being 10 and 3 8 inches well 10 and 7 16 from the ceiling so my my stud finder approach how hollow it is and then the sound changes and it goes back to being hollow again so I'm guessing right about here if I put just a teeny mark there and I measure to verify from this guy I don't know if you can see the red on this measuring tape where I put my mark right here it matches the 16 inches from the other screw exactly. I think I nailed that one. So we will know for certain here in a second. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I have this I have this inexpensive level, okay? Had it for ages. Anyway, this will be good enough for what we're doing here. What I do, just because it makes it easy, is I'm measuring down from the, the ceiling. 
and doing my spacing across all of these brackets and measuring down that same 10 and 7 16 from the ceiling to begin with and then I'll verify it with the level going from bracket to bracket to make sure that the shelf will end up being level when we're all done and obviously if it's out of level not only from an aesthetic point of view can it just look bad because people can could see it and say wow that's that's crooked or it's it's not in parallel with the ceiling and also you could lay something on your shelf and they could roll off so being level is a, a good critical thing and we'll make sure that that's the case here so what I'll do first with this one where I've found the stud I'll mark it coming this other way to 10 and 7 16 Now we've got all of the hangers in place. I also did a little spackling job on the, the extra holes, so we're golden there. Okay, to get the rod length right, we've got to measure from end to from edge of the wall to the edge of the wall. So if I come across here, seventy-eight. We'll need to cut the the shells. They're going to be too long, and the rod is too long. So let's go cut them, and then we'll come back here and put them in place. Okay. And we need seventy-eight. So we're gonna cut off right there. Now I have my sawzall, Milwaukee sawzall, with the uh, hacksaw blade. Obviously, this could be done with a a hand hacksaw as well, it's not that big a deal, but this is just much faster, so we'll go with this. If I can hold it steady. Piece of cake. Okay. Let's go see if we got that right. We can take the label. Yeah, I want you to start it. Okay. Does it fit? Bingo. It does. And if we try my shirt again, real quick. Very easy. There's a hole in the bottom of each one of these hangers. We don't need to screw them all, but we will screw the one in the end, this end, and then the one in that end, just to make it so that the rod doesn't bang into the wall and so that the 
the supports, these on the end, where I, I couldn't control how they were tilted. It'll spread them out, make it all nice. Okay, let's go do the shelves. Here are the shelves, and they didn't have one length that was long enough that I could cut down. These are uh, covered the same all the way around, so there's not a top and a bottom. That's close enough. We'll just put the other one on there and cut that, and then this one is done. I don't have to do anything to it. That's way better. You notice that it did come over midway, so we don't want to cut it right in the middle or it will be too long. And we'll give a little bit on the end and then mark it. So I only have to make one cut, which is awesome. Normally I would have my big square that would be long enough to go all the way across, but today I don't have it. So we'll use this one and do our best. Okay, with this laminated kind of board, I guess it's mal malamine. Go ahead and put some tape on the side I want to keep. It's the only masking tape I have available. There we go. Okay, so you just put it on there to help keep chips from happening. Make it so that if there is something that happens, it's minimized. And I have my circular saw to do that. Again, you could do it with a hand saw, but that's obviously a bigger job. Long, takes longer. <clears throat> so, and I just so happen to have my plywood blade in this saw. <clears throat> So it'll be perfect for cutting this guy. Okay, that worked well. Peel this guy back off. That guy looks good. My ends are good. Okay, we're ready to go fit them. See how they fit in there. And I'll put one in here. Gotta go. Okay, that's awful tight to the wall. I doubt I'll do anything with that one. This one, uh, it's tough to do anything with them since it is particle board. It's gonna break right out. So instead, for this guy, sure they're tight and then I'll put one here one more right here hit the button okay that's it it's in place let's load it up here is the after and we have a lot more room even before we run into the other little shelf there. Storage, there's still some more storage up on top. Plus, see if I can, big plus is we can now very easily close the doors. There you go. Uh, that is it for this little project. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope that there was something useful there. We definitely uh, have more space, much easier uh, to use the washer, the dryer, and have the things available to you there that you need and then be able to have a place to hang things up. We'll make the process go a lot faster. And as you know, happy wife happy life now if she was here she'd probably smack me because she hates that saying 
but it's actually true. So I think this will make her happy. And like I say, it is a Christmas present, so don't tell it a secret. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, as always, feel free to leave comments and questions down uh, below the video there. And I uh, hope to see you next time. See ya. the door. Yes. I wanted to do this forever. Merry Christmas. This always has to stay a job, but it still stays open. You can stay up. Now you get to be here. Oh, just think of what I can do while